Hello and welcome to week 11 activity 2 of the year 9 Jekyll and Hyde scheme of work. This lesson uh, is focused on completing the KIP response for this week which is a question focusing on how Stevenson presents the character of Dr Jekyll across the course of the novella. Yesterday's lesson was uh, helping you prepare for uh, the KIP and this lesson will just take you through exactly uh, the sorts of things that we want you to be writing about in your response. First of all however you have a retrieval practice quiz to complete so what I need you to do is click on one of the two links on this page to complete the retrieval practice quiz for this lesson. As always you will need your knowledge retrieval sheet to help you and today the focus is on information related to Dr Jekyll uh, as he is the focus of this week's KIP. So by the time you've completed this retrieval practice quiz you will hopefully have a little bit more information and understanding about Dr Jekyll that you will then be able to apply to your answers. The hyperlink at the bottom can be typed out into your address bar if for whatever reason the two hyperlinks uh, aren't working and you will receive instant feedback on how well you've done. Uh, so get that started now, pause your audio, come back once you have completed those or that uh, retrieval practice quiz. Welcome back. I hope your retrieval practice quiz went well and that you are feeling ready to write up your kip on Dr Jekyll. Let's quickly go through the today's lesson then. Our challenge objective is to explain Stevenson's presentation of Dr Jekyll across the novella. So how does Stevenson present him? And our aspire is to analyse Stevenson's presentation of Dr Jekyll across the novella. So how does he present uh, the character? Why does he present the character in this particular way? We have some key vocabulary in the bottom left box. Uh, obviously we have the character of Dr Jekyll um, and we have the theme of good and evil um, represented there and the synonyms for those two words which you can find on your knowledge retrieval sheet. So we have good with the synonyms being righteous, moral and principled and we have evil with the synonyms being immoral, sinful and unholy. And on the bottom right box we have a note and reminder for you to complete and submit your kip once you have done this lesson. Of exactly what the KIP task is. What we'd like you to do is write a series of at least three Peel paragraphs answering the question, how is Jekyll presented throughout the course of Jekyll and Hyde? The timing for this task is 45 minutes. That 45 minutes is in addition to the amount of time that it will take you to complete this lesson. We have a couple of helpful hints for you which we worked through in the, uh, the last lesson that we looked at. So first of all, hint one, think about how Jekyll is first described or presented in chapters one to three. And if you completed yesterday's lesson, you have some quotations from chapter three where he's first introduced that will help you with that. Hint two is to think about our view of Jekyll and how that changes in chapters four to eight. And again, if you completed the last lesson, then you will have some quotations there ready. Uh, if not, you'll have to look in the text to find them. And hint three is to think about how our knowledge of chapters uh, nine and 10 impacts on our view of the character. And again, if you completed the last lesson, then you will have some quotations ready to go from that final chapter where Dr Jekyll explains uh, his point of view of the whole story. We have two clear expectations for you from this piece of work. 
First of all, a clear introduction needs to be written that pins down why Jekyll is important in the novel and key themes and contextual factors that are relevant. And number two, we need you to write at least three peel paragraphs, including a clear point that is an idea, quotations used as evidence, an explanation and analysis of the quotation that you choose. And this can include technical vocabulary that you uh, are aware of uh, and a zoom in on a word to explain the meaning and how it uh, tells us about the character of Dr. Jekyll. And finally, we'd like you to include links to either the question, other points in the text, the context or the key themes or more than one of those things if they are relevant. Finally, just a reminder on how to submit your work. So your skip should be submitted on the day of the lesson. So as soon as you've completed this lesson, you can complete your KIP and then submit it. However, if you don't have time to complete it today and again complete it later in the week, then it needs to be submitted by no later than 3 p.m. on the Friday of this week. If you manage to hit that deadline, then staff will provide feedback by the following Wednesday. However, if you miss that deadline, we can't guarantee that that feedback will get to you by the following Wednesday. Finally, where and how do you submit your work? Well, you need to submit your work via the email address for your specific academy. And we have the 10 academies listed below. So, for example, if you're at Dyke House Academy, then you will submit your English kit to DHA Online English at northerneducationtrust.org. So we look forward to reading your responses. Let's move on then to have a look at. So the first thing we're going to do is walk you through how to write a clear introduction that pins down why Dr. Jekyll is important in the novel and key themes and or contextual factors that are relevant. So before you start writing, you need to consider what you're going to put in your introduction. And the following questions are designed to help you think about exactly the information that you want in your introductory paragraph. So question one is, in one sentence, how would you describe the character of Dr. Jekyll when we first meet him in chapter three? Question two, why is Dr. Jekyll important? What does he represent? Question three, does he represent any of the themes? And you can use your knowledge retrieval sheet here for any ideas. Uh, so up in the top right, you can see the themes. Does Dr. Jekyll link to any of those? And finally, are there any contextual factors to mention? So, I've written out a basic example introduction for you. And as it says here, you can do much better. So I don't want you just to copy this word for word. I want you to think about your own response and your own ideas. So I've written, Stevenson presents Dr. Jekyll as a complex, changeable character whose behavior shifts mysteriously throughout the novella. He is important in the novella because he represents a good man who has been corrupted by evil. So you can see in those first two sentences that I've answered the first two questions. This links to the themes of duality and good and evil, because he is the good side of the evil Mr. Hyde. This links to the study of science and religion in the Victorian times, where it was believed that humans had a moral and immoral side to them. And you can see there that I've touched on him representing the themes and I've touched on some contextual factors. As I said before I read that, it is a basic example introduction. There is lots more information that you could include, so make sure that you think of your own and you do it better than the one that I've written. So you could either move on to the next slide or you could pause this audio now complete your introduction, and then we'll move on. If you're doing that, pause now, 
and if you uh, want to carry on and look at the peel paragraphs just wait a few seconds and we'll continue So welcome back to those people who have written their introductions. I hope that went well. Um, we're now going to move on to look at a Peel paragraph uh, in your response. And just like in the previous one, I've done an example. It is quite a basic example. Um, and you can obviously um, write your own using your own ideas. So. As we are all aware, a PEEL paragraph stands for P, point, E, evidence, E, explanation, and L, links. The first part then is a clear point that is an idea. So here we have, in my example, when Stevenson first introduces the character of Dr. Jekyll in chapter three of the novella, he presents him as an upstanding and respected member of society. I'm answering that question straight away. How does Stevenson present Dr. Jekyll, an upstanding and respected member of society? I then go on to include a quotation that I'm using as evidence. So my quotation I've chosen from the first uh, part of the last lesson, and I've chosen the quotation um, a large, well-made, smooth-faced man of 50. The third part of your Peel paragraph is an explanation and analysis of the quotation, including technical vocabulary, a zoom in on a word, etc. And here I've written that the quotation suggests to the reader that Dr. Jekyll is a handsome, rich man and therefore very different to Mr. Hyde. The use of the word well made suggests he looks respectable in the clothes he wears, whilst the phrase smooth faced suggests innocence, like the smooth skin of a baby. So I've used some very basic technical vocabulary where I've put the word and the phrase and I've zoomed in on two parts of the quotation that I thought I could explain in a bit more detail in how Stevenson has presented Dr. Jekyll to give a particular effect or a particular idea. The final part of my paragraph then are links to the question, other points in the text, the context and the key themes. So this is what I've written. This initial presentation of Dr. Jekyll is interesting because it contrasts dramatically with the presentation of Mr. Hyde, who is small, ugly and badly dressed. Stevenson describes Dr. Jekyll in this way to emphasise his decency and good reputation, but also to misdirect the reader so we don't associate his physical appearance and demeanour with Mr. Hyde. This makes the reveal that they are the same person far more shocking. So what I've done there then is linked to the question and also linked to the character of Mr. Hyde because I felt it was important to highlight how Stevenson deliberately describes Dr. Jekyll as very different to Mr. Hyde. So hopefully that has given you an idea of what we are looking for in our Peel paragraph. And you have three of these to write. So we have one slide left. I will take you through that. And then it's your opportunity to complete your KIP. So this is your RAG plenary then. I want you to consider the work that you've completed this lesson. So if you've completed your KIP, if you've written it all up, I want you to think about are you proud of what you've written? Have you answered the question properly? Have you included and explained quotations from the text? Have you zoomed in on key words to explore them in more detail? And have you linked your ideas to other parts of the novella or to the context? Now, if you've answered uh, all of these questions, yes, then you're ready to submit your work to your teachers. If you haven't yet completed your KIP, I suggest you pause your audio and you 
complete your peel paragraphs now. Otherwise, um, as I say, if you have answered yes to everything, then submit your work to your teachers. And just at the bottom of the page there, there is a reminder of exactly how it is you do that. I hope that this has been really useful and I hope that you complete the kit to the best of your ability and you get some amazing feedback. Well done for all of your hard work on Jekyll and Hyde so far this half term. We're very nearly at the end of our learning for Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you have a wonderful summer uh, and thank you very much for listening.